To get started in our keystroke and pain reduction project here, let's think of what we want to do. We want people to only need to enter the zip code, not the city or state. And then when they're finished, query the API for the city and state and fill in those fields. So first, let's hide the fields that we don't want people to fill in as long as JavaScript is available and we can do this at all. Remember progressive enhancement. If this were a real page, we'd want people to be able to fill in all their information and submit it with their order, even if there's no JavaScript. So I have CSS that will hide these fields and a few others to keep things simple if we add a class to the body. This is a pretty common pattern in progressive enhancement. Only start to take things away when JavaScript is known to be available and working using classes to trigger those changes. I'm gonna open up the developer tools and go to the console here. So the plan here is to add a class to the body. So I can use document.query selector to retrieve the body tag. And I can see there's a lot of classes on here. So if I want to update the class, I could use class name, and that's gonna give me back a whole string of these. If I just set this to the class I want, which is just JS, that's gonna blow away all these other ones. That's not what I want. So instead of using class name, I'm going to use a slightly newer version of how to manipulate classes called class list. This is an element that has a couple of methods on it, add and remove. I want to add the JS class. And so when I do this, a whole bunch of the fields disappear to reduce distraction. I've removed some extra fields just to avoid distraction for our purposes in this project. You wouldn't necessarily want to do this except for the city and state field in a real situation. We're also going to want to trigger our postal code lookup when someone is done entering their postal code here. We could listen to the input, key up, or key down events that all relate to typing and text fields, but that would mean we're firing an event more often than we need to. When the user is done entering their postal code, they're gonna move on to other fields, and that field won't be focused anymore. In terms of the DOM API, that is called a blur event, so we'll use that instead. All right, let's go to the editor and write some code. I'll copy this before we go. Close the developer tools. Now here we are in Visual Studio Code. Remember that we're using the copy of the files that's being served by that web server, not on my desktop. So the first thing that we're going to do, I have a few lines in here to just help us avoid a little bit of typing, just some selectors to get the zip code field, city and state. First thing that we'll do up at the top here is paste in the addition of that class to the body field. And then the next thing we said we were going to do is add a blur event to that zip code field. So this is called zip field here. So we'll add an event listener to that. And this is called blur. And this is going to be a function. You can leave these anonymous or you can name them. I'm going to call this query postal code. And we're going to need to retrieve the value of the zip code field. So that'll be zip field dot value. And we should sanitize this. So let's set a variable, we'll call it zip code. And we'll run this through parseInt because the zip code that we're looking for is just the five digit version of it. So we can sanitize it down to an integer, passing in the radix of 10 to parseInt, the same way we've seen before. And if the zip code is less than or equal to zero, that obviously wouldn't be right. Or if the zip code is greater than five digit number that's all nines, we'll return. I'll put a placeholder in here for actually making the query. Once that query is made, which we'll be handling later, we know we're gonna want to reset the city and state fields so they're visible, where their values magically filled in. The CSS that we have targets some container of these fields, not the actual fields themselves. So let's figure out how to address those and make them appear again. I'm gonna save this file and go back out to the browser, open up those developer tools again, and we'll get the web inspector. I'm going to inspect this postal code field. Here are the hidden fields. How far down do we have to go to get to the text fields inside? There we go. So in my code, I'm selecting the city field and the state field, which are these billing city and billing state input fields inside. So we have to go up one, two levels to get to the element that is actually being hidden. 
So let's experiment in the console here. So here in the console, we're going to play with that city field. I'll just copy the selector, switch back to the browser and paste this in. Now we have that field to play with. So if we were to just set the style of the city field directly, using the style property and then the display property inside that style property, and setting that instead of none, which hides it to block, that does not do anything right now. We need to go up to that parent. And that was two levels up, one, two levels up. We can get to that by traversing up to the parent node and one more parent node. This is a part of the DOM API that will do traversal through the tree, through the outline. So we go up to the parent and then its parent and set its style to block. And now we have that city field back. Okay, so let's copy that and bring it back in here. We're going to need this for both the city and the state. I'll save this and we'll switch back to the browser and check the behavior that we have so far. I have a zip code field. And then when I use the tab key to unfocus that, the town and the state appear. Now, of course, we're only gonna to wanna to do this after we make our request and have data to put in those fields. But this is a good start. We've scaffolded out our structure, added the enhancements we need for display and the event handling that we want, and we're ready to make the actual query and use it. We'll do that next.